Watanabe is an award-winning lawyer serving Arizona businesses, and she couldn't have done it alone. Today we're talking about the secret weapon that's helped transform her business. Hi, I'm Emily LaRouche. Are you ready to make the journey from lawyer to entrepreneur? Every week I'm sitting down with people who have mastered the art of running a business and want to share with you the lessons they've learned along the way. Join me as we experience the highs, the lows, and everything in between as we learn, share, and grow together. Welcome to Share the Love. May, before we get into the secrets to your business success, why business law? Um, I come from a family of entrepreneurs. Uh, my parents were both business owners, and um, I grew up in the back of their businesses, really. So I got to see the day-to-day -day struggles, successes, and um, the growth that happens when you're a committed entrepreneur. So I wanted to be a part of that for all the other businesses out there. Wonderful. And just to share with our viewers a little bit about your business, uh, what do you primarily do? I am the managing attorney and I handle business and real estate transactional work for um, companies that typically have less than 25 employees. So typically we do a lot of contract work, business formation, securing funding, um, and in the real estate realm we do uh, lease drafting, lease uh, reviews, mm -hmm. we secure funding for big facilities like apartment complexes and medical facilities and we help with landlord-tenant disputes when tenants become problematic. Wonderful. And May and I were talking, and May's had a transformative experience within her business by getting some coaching. So tell me about the first time as a young lawyer that you had mentoring, or was it more recent? The first time, actually, I was pretty young. Um, I was one of those kids that knew immediately what they were going to do. I was going to be a lawyer. I told my mom in the fifth grade, and she didn't believe me. And <laughs> I said it every year until she did. Um, so, I, as I said, they, um, they were entrepreneurs and they had an attorney. So I was probably 12 or 13 when I went up to him and I went to one of the meetings that they were having and I said, I want to be just like you. And he became a family friend, took me under his wing and helped me as I progressed through college, law school, and then started my own practice. In fact, he referred my very first client to me. Really? That yeah. is the coolest story. Yeah. That's awesome. And so more recently, you've been making some changes in your business. Um, how has all of that come about? Well, we have been growing, um, and I wanted to make sure that as we grew, we continued to serve our clients with excellence, that we were pr producing the work timely, efficiently, um, and thoroughly, that it was, it was a good job uh, done for our clients. And as we grew, that became harder without a good system in place. So I reached out to other attorneys, and then eventually I found a program through another attorney called Strategic Coach. And I joined that program and it's been very helpful in helping us put together a good system for the firm. So as we continue to grow, we can build on that system. What's one of the changes that you've made recently that you feel like every attorney should be doing this? Where has this been all my life? Um, there is a concept, this is going to surprise most attorneys, but there is a concept called free time in Strategic Coach. And that is when you take a 24-hour period where you do not focus on the business. Um, I typically work seven days a week, so this was a very foreign concept to me. And I remember at our first session, uh, everyone said they would take two days a week off. And I raised my hand. I said, well, I'll take one this quarter. And that was it. That's all I was giving them. So I took it off, and gosh, it was so easy to get back into the office and come up with fresh ideas and to build a process and not be so tired when you've had that day to rejuvenate. So that was a great concept that I am now taking one day a week to enjoy. <laughs> That's awesome. And I know in my own business, I will, you know, when it gets busy, I'm, I'm there. I'm there until yeah. after hours, I'm there, but opening hours, whatever it takes to get the work done, right? And so um, there's been a couple times where I did that so much that I'm like, I'm gonna collapse. I, I hate everybody. Yes. I don't even wanna look at any of you. I need a break and I, I'll, you know, usually it's in a huff. I'm taking a day off. <laughs> I, I need it. I'm <laughs> out of here. And the funniest thing happens is that day that I'm gone, we always get a bunch of sales, always. Yeah. And so the joke is, Emily, you kill business, go away. <laughs> and when you come back, we'll have all these new clients. So sure. that's kind of the joke, but it's so true that you come back refreshed, creative, the little break, it's, it's good for everybody around you. It is, and I do believe if you have the right people in place, your absence will actually fuel the business and help the business grow because a lot of times we're in there and we're just slowing things down for them. So having a good team really helps you be able to take some time off um, every now and then so you can come back refreshed. You have an amazing team. 
Thank you. I'd love to steal your assistant. <laughs> She's so good. <laughs> I pride myself on my team. They are the reason I am able to get done a quarter of what I do. I mean, without them, I would be lost. So did you luck up on your team, or do you have any secrets or systems um, to finding a great team? Um, I think it's a little bit of both. I, there is a little element of luck in there. But I also make sure that the interview process is very much focused on the kind of company culture we want here. And I start the, the interview by saying we are client focused. Our priority is making sure our clients have the best experience possible with us. And that is a requirement. You have to believe in that mm -hmm. to be able to work here. And then they see it continually. They see me focusing on things like, no, no, we'll take care of this part because it's easier for the client. Let's focus on making their experience better. And we kind of just create that culture. Wonderful. So I saw an interview with a gentleman. He does $400 billion a year. Oh. And he was saying, you know, when in his interviewing to make sure you're a culture fit, he says, you know, business isn't nine to five. If you're looking mm -hmm. for a lifestyle job, this may not be it because like you said, the client needs to come first. And right. sometimes that means you stay a little extra. Yes. And so for him, he says you're either in, and that means you stay the extra, or you're out, meaning you just want a job that will support your lifestyle. And so for him, if you're not in, you're out. And mm -hmm. that has just, I've been thinking about it nonstop ever since. Who on my team is here to work their few hours, get a paycheck and go home, and who's in? Yes. And that's especially important at my firm. We get to do some amazing work for small business owners whose lives depend on their job, uh, on this business they've created. And we get to see them excel and grow. And I can't tell you how rewarding it is when I help someone start their LLC and then I help them open their first location and then their second and their third and their fourth. And all of a sudden they've got, you know, 30 employees and they're making several million dollars and their kids, their mortgage is paid off and their kids' college fund is paid. I mean, that is the most rewarding experience. Uh, Being a, a part thing. of the entrepreneurial dream. Yes, <laughs> the American dream. Yes, absolutely. Yes. That's wonderful. All right, so May, before I let you go, mm -hmm. I have some rapid fire questions for you. Ooh. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Favorite place to vacation? Italy, without a doubt. Last movie you watched at a theater? The book club. If you were playing hooky from work, where would I find you? The spa. Any spa in particular? The Fairmont Princess Spa in Scottsdale. Awesome. <laughs> so now we know where to go. <laughs> and if May's not at work, hit her up at the spa. Yes. <laughs> okay. Best thing you've done for your business in the last year? Signed up for coaching. Awesome. Are you a night owl or morning person? I used to be a night owl, and that's probably my nature, but I'm trying to train myself, trying to train myself to be a morning person. Okay. And how can our viewers find you? Oh, you can give us a call at 602-845-0152 or visit our website, anabilaw.com. May Anabi from the Anabi Law Firm. Thank you so much for being here, Thank May. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Share the Love. Make sure to give us a thumbs up, share, and subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, and Google Play to get the latest content.